Hey everyone, Danelle Jones here. This week I wanted to have a conversation with you around valuing accuracy over certainty. So what's going to happen as you get into your transformation program is that you know, learning to work in a evolutionary uh, way, learning to test and learn continually in your organization, well, that's going to create a lot of ambiguity. And so you need to teach yourself, your team, your organization to handle that ambiguity and to handle the uncertainty. And so what you find as a leader is that, um, you know, often the executives I work with really struggle with this sense of, um, you know, I, I used to have control and I used to have my finger on the pulse. And now I feel like that is slipping through my fingers. Um, I remember one of my early mentors, Patrick, who said to, um, who's actually, it was a media interview that he did, and who's asked about this idea of transformation and what it means to go big with innovation and, you know, talk about your journey. And I remember Patrick saying that, you know, as an executive, you're going to get to this point where, you know, a few months in, all you want to do is just grab a hold of things and and really hold on because it gets a bit scary and he said you have to fight every bone in your body and keep letting go and keep going with it so it's not a small ask and it's not a small ask for your team and so what's really important is that we build in these ways for our organization to handle the ambiguity to handle the uncertainty and one of the ways we can do that is by choosing to value accuracy of the data as we know it today rather than certainty because that'll help us to keep making progress rather than fall into that trap of perfectionism. So um, the example that I always use when I'm teaching this concept is the idea of a three, six, nine month rolling wave plan. So what happens in big organizations the world over um, is we get to around three months out from financial year end and all of a sudden the planning starts for, you know, what we're going to do for the next coming financial year. So we start going into this massive planning process of what are we going to do, you know, 12, 18 months away from where we are today. And then we go through the process as we move closer towards financial year end of trying to lock in the plan and to lock in budget so that we have absolute certainty over what we're spending for the next 12 months. Um, and as you can imagine, I'm sure many of you have been through it before, and there's, well, there's a bit of skepticism on my part as to actually the validity of going through all of that, because what you're trying to do, trying to plan work 18 months in advance of where we are today, is just ludicrous. But we do want to make sure that we are planning and we're being responsible in that. And so what can we do instead? So if we know that it's a total fallacy to have absolute certainty over what we're going to be doing in 18 months time, then what does it look like to do something different? Well, with rolling wave planning, what you're able to do is set up an environment where you have a plan, but you also have the ability to change. So I talk about three, six, nine months as a starting point, and this fits really well if you've got an existing annual planning cycle that you have to fit into, and if you probably don't have the uh, capacity, the permission to change that cycle today. What you can do is you can start to break your work down. So um, take that plan, take that 12-month plan, and we're going to break it into three chunks. The first bucket is going to be that work that we think we're going to do in the next three months. And we should have a fair degree of accuracy over what that looks like, uh, what we think is going to be in that bucket, um, what we think is achievable in the next three month time. The next bucket is what's in that three to six month window. What's a little bit further out? We're still pretty sure that we're going to get to it this year and, and in the next six months. It's reasonable to think that these things might lead on from what's in the three-month bucket. It's a relative degree of certainty around it. And so they go into the three- to six-month bucket. And then the third bucket is the six months plus. So what is on our radar? What do we have aspirations for? What do we know is not happening now? But what do we still want to achieve maybe within the year or towards the end of the year? That's going to sit in your six months plus bucket. Uh, 
that's the stuff that we are less certain about. Uh, it's the stuff that maybe is a little underdeveloped and needs some more uh, problem analysis, those sorts of things. And we're putting it in that bucket and saying it's more than six months away and for the moment we're not going to focus on it. And so what it does is you're able to set up so that you've got what's happening in the next three months, what's happening in the three to six month bucket, what's happening in the six month plus bucket. And that way, as you move through on a quarterly basis, you've got a frame that you can assess around and you can look back on the past three months and say, hey, what did we achieve compared with what we planned? And what it also does is it gives you the freedom to start to roll that plan through as you get more adept at planning on a continual basis. And so that three months might not be a fixed quarter. It might actually start to shift with you and maybe you reassess every month or so. And so you're bringing down those planning cycles and it becomes just a small shift for the next three months plan and the subsequent knock on. So that at any point in time, you have a high degree of certainty over what's happening in the next three months. You're fairly certain you know what that is. You're pretty sure what those costs look like. That's all pretty well known and understood. And you've got a high degree of certainty over what's happening in the next three to six months but you're potentially not quite as certain around that. You, you will put down the information that is accurate as you know it today, but it could change. And then you've got your third bucket, which is more than six months away. Again, very much this is the picture that we know it today. It's accurate today, but we probably expect that there's going to be a high degree of change in that plan based on what we're learning on what we're working on today and in the next sort of three to six months. Based on all of that, we know that that six month plus plan is going to change. But you've got those bounds around you and you can start to frame up within a 12 month cycle that still meets those financial reporting requirements, but also gives your team the flexibility to keep moving and keep checking in and keep learning as you go. So, in summary, <laughs> when we're going through transformation and when we're starting to struggle with meeting the requirements for being absolutely certain on numbers in our organization and really also trying to put in place the learning that we want to do that's going to drive the innovation in our company, we need a method or methods that are going to enable us to value accuracy over certainty. We're only going to be 100% certain once the job is done, but what can we do in the interim that will give people the visibility, the comfort that we're planning, and the clarity of priorities that we need to keep moving forward? That's your three, six, nine month plan. So I hope that was useful. Um, drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear if you've either implemented rolling wave planning in full flight in your organization. Uh, maybe you've tried something similar to the three, six, nine month plan, or maybe you're really struggling with this current annual planning cycle and you've got questions about how you even start around implementing something like this. Hit me up, drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Have a wonderful week wherever you are in the world. Take care and we'll see you again soon.